Hello and welcome to Once More With Feeling Hurt Retrospective Goodbye to the Machine Yeah, we've not had much fun with listening through this album What happened? Seriously? I mean... In terms of personnel, we know what happened in the the bassist and drummer changed. But aside from that... Oh, and also they changed labels, which... Well, basically, they were dropped from the label when volumes one and two didn't prove to be commercial successes. And supposedly this album is meant to be allusions to their negativity towards big labels. They are mildly annoyed. Yeah, I mean, when when you, when you hear that sort of setup, you you expect it to be really angry or at least at least fairly pissed. You don't get any of that with this album. It does seem like they're meant to be someone to look okay, well, put you on a label, but what we get to do is what a bunch of stuff that sounds really really generic. Yeah, maybe you'll be sticking in the top forty or something. <laughs> I mean, bafflingly enough, I mean, well, I know we don't do the star ratings anymore, but I'm sure this would not pass, well, what would you give it? I mean, quality-wise? Just an overall score. We have two of this. Yeah. And yet somehow it sort of averaged three, three and a half, four stars with, you know, major magazines and all that sort of thing. And it's all sort of like, what the fuck? What? What were you listening to? I just wonder whether, you know, the people that write this think, oh, this sounds really, really good and mainstream and try everyone will like it. Hmm. Oi. Anyway, shall we get into the songs? Let's get in and get out. Yeah. This will be a short review, I can guarantee that much, because I did not write that many notes. Uh, so, the first song, Got Jealous. So it's not a title that kind of annoys me, you know, so. Yeah. I mean... It's oh, if it wasn't hurt, it would be an okay song. But yeah, that's the. I mean, as far as it goes, it's one of probably one of the better songs on the album. I'd say. Yeah, I mean it's. I'm gonna drive to it. Yeah, it's okay as a straight up sort of punk rock sort of track. It's very mainstreamy. Um, I'd say the second half is much better than the first half. Hmm. Um, it definitely feels like the sort of song designed specifically to get them airplay. And then, as far as the whole thing of being angry at that label kind of thing, I think it's only really one of the songs that fits that premise better than others. Mm. It's kind of ironic because one of the ones that sounds like it's made for airtime is also kind of one that actually fits that. Yeah. Suppose it was. <laughs> yeah, because um, Eric says, if I don't get out, get out of here, I'm gonna kill someone. I've got sing, I've got a single fear. I think someone will come just to put me away into a cage where I never would see the sun. If I don't get out of here, I'm gonna kill someone. I think he's been in your room for way too damn long. I want him out of here before I kill someone, so he never could see, so he never could never see the sun. Fucking double negatives. I mean, it. As I say, it's okay if it was a mainstream. You know, the problem with this song and pretty much the whole album is the songs could be sung by literally anyone yeah I mean if you look at the previous albums they've kind of got a certain kind of style that makes them stand out yeah above you know, the average stuff this not so much this is well, as I said it sounds like it could be any band at all yeah uh, I just I, I mean this is as as we say this is one of the better songs on the album and we're bitching about it so that already will give you an idea for the, the bitch fest that you're in store for with this review. Um, so yeah, I, I'm just going to speed through the songs because I really cannot be asked to go in depth because they really do not feel like... I, I listened through them. I listened through them again. I mean, I didn't listen through them again today because I just could not be asked with the album. But I have listened through the album multiple times. I cannot get any more than a pissy, whiny feeling from this album. The seem as though kind of lost some of it. Yeah. Quite a Yeah. So, yeah, next song, Pandora. I'd say this is probably, well, 
This feels closer to her standard style. It does also feel like a syncopated drumming over here, like in the song. Yeah. But it does feel like a sort of, like they're trying to blend aspects of Nine Inch Nails, Fade No More, um, Dog Fashion Disco, you know, all those sorts of bands. It feels like they're trying to draw on those and it, it's an it's an alright song. It's one of the better ones on the album. I mean, I'm actually tempted to kind of say this might actually be really my least, not if not favourite, probably second favourite on the album. Hmm. Uh, There's a bit of sound to it. Yeah. I mean. Was it, I'm not sure. This is like the vocals are a bit different to usual. It's kind of got a certain kind of echo kind of sound to them. Yeah, it does. Uh, I quite like that effect. Yeah. Um. Oh, he loved to hear her moan. And when he'd come around, he'd hope that she's alone, because the window makes a sound. Ew. <laughs> it's all right, she says. Come inside, she says. Come inside. Ew. <laughs> well, that snow-coloured skin beneath the moonlight was a vision of a better time, when you and I had different lives. Is something the matter? No, she bowed into the finish line saying you will learn in due time. She shook and moaned and spread her thighs. Ew! <laughs> There's a lot of ewing going on here. Yeah. <laughs> but not as if you know, her having gone and done some really creepy-ass lyrics before. Yeah, but there's creepy-ass and... It, uh, I mean, this has the unfortunate um, Saint Anger syndrome. You know, the whole it feeling artificially extended by virtue of repeated lyrics and repeated sound. Mm. Uh, it's still better than some of the songs on the album. Yeah, it is. You get something like this, if this is the kind of stand out for the album compared to some of the stuff on the previous albums, you can tell it just, it's not like that. Mm. <laughs> this is probably going to be the leading song on the previous albums. Yeah. And it's one of the best here, so. Again, we're still bitching about it, even though it's one of the best. <laughs> well, I think, as far as the music league goes, it's probably. It's pretty good. Mm. Um, let's. I don't really have any problems with the actual interpretation here at all. Yeah. I really can't be bothered to try to interpret this as any more than just same shit, different album. <laughs> uh, next song, Wars. Wars. I would personally say that it's probably the best song on the album. Mm, I think it's actually the first song on the album I heard. Mm. When we were listening to all those songs a while ago. Yeah. Randomly bouncing around on bass when I was doing, uh, introducing myself to them. Yeah. This is the first song on this album I heard, so. Hmm. Um, it does feel a lot closer to her style, although vocally it does remind me of Avenge Sevenfold. Um, I guess I can kind of see that. Surely it reminds me of something else, but can't play as well. Hmm. Um, although well, to be a lot better than Avenge Sevenfold. Yeah. But, uh, although to be f don't like Avenge Sevenfold. <laughs> to be fair, Avenge Sevenfold does have the odd good song, so swings and roundabouts. Well, the disappointment of seeing them live, uh, Yeah. Hey, look on the bright side, at least it wasn't job for a cowboy. <laughs> yeah, you had the really bad end of the... You didn't even have the short straw, you had a straw that dissolved into ash. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> it has some straw remnants. <laughs> We're not sure what this straw is. Yeah. I, to be honest, I really can't be bothered to analyse the lyrics that much. With most of these songs. Huh? As far as this song goes, it does, it's nothing that really interests me that much. Mm. It's like one of the basic elements uh, that could be something interesting, but it doesn't really go anywhere with them. Yeah, I mean. Well, like the kind of guitar riffs in the chorus. Yeah. That's actually decent enough. Yeah. Uh, the rest of it just sounds, sounds very minimalist and not in a good way. Mm. I mean, this is where we get into the... You can kind of see where they're coming from with anger and frustration with the record company if you look at it sideways. But it's still a bit... Nah. Uh, men of destruction reap iniquity while heroes of courage die with dignity. How many weapons did I help create? How many lives will, I, will it devastate, my darling? As I say, if you look at it sideways, you can kind of see it, but... Yeah. I think of all the days in my life where I could have done something more. Yes, I remember the days in my life where I could have done something more. 
There is never a day that goes by that's a good day to die. Please open your eyes to the millions of lives that will senseless, senselessly die in our wars. Ugh. Yeah, they jumped off the deep end with this album. I don't quite get how they're going to go to the stage. It's fun. Mm. Anyway, next song, World Ain't Right. Now this really sounds like same shit, different. <laughs> Yeah, it's actually got Sean Morgan on vocals. So, yeah, it's like, oh, it's not kind of like Cedar. Let's collaborate with Cedar to make it sound even more like Cedar. Yeah. <laughs> and I personally am not a fan of Cedar, so that really is like. <laughs> yeah, I quite like him personally. Although, they've changed a lot over the years. Mm. I haven't even heard their newer stuff. I, I, I just heard bits and pieces and thought, nah, they're not, they're not my cup of tea. Uh, I mean, I think, come on, the album's called right now, uh, Funny Busy Nick to me, he sounds a lot better than anything else I've done. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, but yeah, it really, I mean, we've discussed at length the previous albums, and when I say same shit, different album, uh, the world is it just ain't right. It keeps me up at night. A good man's paralysed. He's everything to me. Hell, what else could he be? He paid for all we'd do. He paid for all we'd get. He... Ah. Uh, just try not to forget if it hasn't happened yet. Uh, just... It feels like losing. <laughs> These lyrics feel like they're trying to expand on the concept of losing and failing miserably I don't know because they had such a, I mean the lyrics in the earlier albums you know they're actually pretty interesting to listen to yeah here yeah, it's just like what it's there's nothing to this song it is just I I literally when I listen to it I just think oh get over it already <laughs> it's not even that interesting music for either it's just oh me and my acoustic guitar yeah I mean, it got a bit of a violin in there, it's a little bit more interesting, but it's not something they had done before. Hmm. Um. Next, there's Sweet Delilah. Sweet Delilah. And I've just got Sweet Caroline in my head now. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking as well. Yeah. Oh, that's good. It's. Who is Delilah? I don't know. <laughs> you know how little information I can find about them. But, I was a rename of Dave. That's what we know for Sweet Dave. Hmm. Um, again, same shit, different album. It doesn't sound very familiar. Also, not as good. Mm. Which is, you know, a common name. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, for me, admittedly, the biggest failing is the fact that it really could fit on so many other bands' albums. It's so generic that it's sort of like, yep, this could fit on any sort of album. So, I thought it was probably because it fit quite nicely alongside something like, say, Coldplay. Yeah. When Hurt sounds like Coldplay, you know you've got a problem. I mean, I've heard lots of other indie bands these days that sound pretty much the same as this. Hmm. So... Um... Uh, yeah. Sweet Delilah, come inside, and won't you mend my broken bones? The more that I get thrust aside, the more I beg you not to go. I'm building up a wall, and I can't get over it. I slip into the false again. Mm. Eh? I think I'd go back to the uh, original lyrics I had when they made their playtests. They weren't like... <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, fuck this song, it's just so boring. We seem to have this stereotypical kind of acoustic guitar solo here, though. Yeah. Next we've got... I think this is from The Proclaimers. <laughs> Um, next we've got 1331 or 1331. Um, is that a leet speak uh, thing? I don't know. Or a piece of shit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, lyrically it's okay because it actually gets kind of weird and you're sort of like, what the fuck does this mean? But musically, it is painfully generic. It's like. I 
I'm doing the genericness against me. It's just a, it sounds like shit. Well, it's just something about the kind of pacing and toning of the uh, instrument. It just it sounds really irritating. Well, to me, it sounds like a very badly recorded system of a down song. <laughs> yeah, I can kind of do that. And I'm talking sort of um, steal this album type, uh, the sound they had on that album. Uh, I think this album was actually anywhere near as good as that album was. Then we wouldn't be bitching so much. This album was actually good. Yeah. This is not. This album, this song in particular, is the one that really stood out to me because I listened to just thinking, what the hell am I listening to? Yeah. All right. As I say, the lyrics. It's one of those really frustrating things because it's sort of like these lyrics deserve a better song. Because mm. it's such a kind of the high pitched vocals combined with these kind of badly recorded drums just don't work. Yeah, it it sounds very kind of light and fluffy, you know, not in a good way. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, with her, you know, their lyrics aren't going to be light and fluffy most of the time. So, for it to sound light and fluffy just does not work. I mean, even when the guitars get a little heavy, they're not metal heavy, they're radio play heavy. Or radio head heavy. <laughs> no, if it was radio head sounding, it would actually be good. It does sound kind of like a bad radio head song. Ah, uh, so like shiny happy people. <laughs> I don't even like you to find a radio head, but this is bad. Oh wait, radio. No, sorry. Ah, well, I've just fucked up. Uh, I, I, I was thinking REM, not Radiohead. Duh. <laughs> no, if it was Ra REM, it'd be good. Radiohead, eh, can take them or leave them. Yeah, Radiohead kind of bad. I think. Eh, I guess I can see what people like them, but they're not for not us. Occasionally, but nothing that really stands out as being special. Hmm. Uh, yeah. Uh, I absolutely hate them. I'm just kind of indifferent to them. Yeah. Uh, they're a poor man's... They're a poor man's attempt at a poor man's attempt at the cure. <laughs> yeah, I can't argue with that. Being a huge gift. Oh, the cure has a fair share of amplifiers as well. Well, it's a crap song as well. every band has their fair share of crap songs. <coughs> Saint Anger. Well, it's not a problem. Yeah. It always had to happen. Yeah. But anyway, uh, yeah. Uh, the lyrics, a sugar pop dropped down the delivery slot because he loaded it up when I was there to buy some strings. I'm finding times like these would mean everything to me. Tommy looked up at his novelty clock. He stopped and locked up the shop to play a piece. He turned and talked to me till I would have to leave. Kids on the slope? <laughs> Kind of flow to them. Unfortunately, the flow is just interrupted by copious wrinkles. Yeah. I don't even really sync up with the lyrics at all. Yeah, it just. But, this is. This sort of epitomizes the what the fuck happened. So I can't really see any instance where this kind of song structure and kind of. Uh, what's that I'm looking for? Hmm. Gelling, gelling, maybe. Yeah. It doesn't work. So you tried gelling it together, but unfortunately you didn't realize the gel was actually soy sauce. <laughs> Made everything incredibly slippery and everything just falls apart. <laughs> everyone knows the spoils is more slipperier than anything else in existence. Hmm. Yeah, it's just it's a pity that it's not as good as falls apart. <laughs> I mean, I know we kind of bitched a bit about that one, but it was okay. It wasn't this shit. It, it just being okay is better than one of our listeners. Yeah. Next song. Roll Martyr X. What's that title you mean? Um, I can think of two possibilities. A, they're actually meaning Malcolm X, because he was assassinated, so he became a Roll Martyr. B, it could just mean insert applicable Roll Martyr here. So it could, so it could be Jesus, Gandhi. Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, you know, it could be any of them. Maybe we never know. Hmm. But the problem with this song, it could be on any rock album from the last 30 years. I don't know, it's 
sen när jag säger, ja, jag har just en nära exam så jag bara, ja, det är så snö, så så typ inte majs där. Ja. I mean, it's got a nice sound. It's competent. Competent is a good word. Yeah. Uh, worthwhile, as you know, something to listen to when there's so many other things out there. Mm, not so much. Yeah. Um, it's all right. To find the strength to carry on, you put the marks into your body. You talk at length how you're alone and bitch at all the famous parties. Such a vision of pure loneliness. What an image you profess. Don't you turn and walk away, cause you're getting me depressed. In hopes you'd never be alone, you bore your, your cross around your body. It was in bad taste, immolate and gaudy. I don't know. I, I really don't know. I, I think it's just... I think the whole concept of this song is the idea of someone just making themselves out to be a role martyr. Quite possible. I mean, the thing that does suppose to me is uh, when you get to turn off and it just repeats the same kind of melody over and over again, like seven times in a row. Yeah. Like, it, it, it's just lazy. It has horrible Saint Anger syndrome. <laughs> it's a uh, you know, repeating part there. Mm. It's easy to try and want to be multiple different things as well. I've been this style a few times, which usually would be interesting, but it just doesn't flow here. Mm. I mean, lyrically, it's another case of the lyrics deserve a better song, because you can see how the lyrics could work as a sort of, you know, slamming someone. I think we've all encountered someone who makes themselves out to be a martyr. You know, they're, they're sort of like, oh, I've done all this for so many different people and I get no thanks in return, oh, woe is me, that sort of thing. So lyrically, it could work! You know, it could be a good Hurt song, but musically, it's just boring. <laughs> I think it turns out about it. So I've heard this kind of music so many times over before. Yeah. I mean, it's... It's like with ACDC, with their most recent album. At least I presume they haven't released a new album with Axl Rose yet. Well, no. Um, but yeah, it's like ACDC with their most recent album. It sounds like how they sounded 30 years ago. You know, there's nothing new. This is, musically, this is the most generic, milk toast, weak, you know, redundant song in existence. I mean, I'd like to see what someone could do with the lyrics and just completely change the music. You know, not even do a cover musically, just do a completely different arrangement. I you could just, you know, set it to Thomas Sankin and hear what happens. <laughs> oh god, that would be weird. It's a bit of so... <laughs> I set it to Guile's theme. Huh? Or no, Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Actually, I think I can do that. To find the strength to carry on, you put the marks into your body and talk at length how you're alone and bitch at all the famous parties. Yeah, such a vision of pure loneliness. <laughs> that was a really awkward one to do, but it could, could it sort of worked. You'd have to sort of pass out the verses a bit so that it would go a bit more, you know, it would be three line verses instead of four line verses. Three instead of four. Mm. But, yeah, it's... Next song! Well. Well, 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 well. How did I know you were going to do that? <laughs> now this... Uh, this actually feels like something different. It feels like what is more appropriate for her to be doing. Mm. Yeah, you know, it's, it's got typical rock elements, but it actually has her signature style. It, it does sound. This is kind of song. I think when we were talking to you about the other day, in the case of oh, this one of the songs that actually stood out to me. Hmm. Between this and Pandora, so. Um. You can start missing a little bit kind of more eighties style rock as well. Yeah. It's a bass line combined with a kind of guitar. Mm. It's actually a bass line so probably long as well. It doesn't happen that often. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't able to deal with the pain and the loss, and the darkness would surround me. What could I have been? What should have... What... Oh, 
God, someone's really fucked with typing out these. What could I've been? What should have been? Uh? I, whatever. I, I think that should be what could have been, what should have been. Pain. CRAWLING IN MY SKIN! <laughs> I couldn't resist that. That was somewhat scary. <laughs> and with the state of affairs and the way that I was, I took a pistol from the closet. I loaded around, opened my mouth, closed my eyes, said goodbye, and click. I would find another way. So yeah. Signatures hurt sound here, cause clearly about suicide. Hmm. I mean, lyrically, it's one of the most interesting songs on the album. Musically, it's it's interesting. Mm. I like the song. Yeah. But it kind of actually a little bit Pink Floyd. Mm. I guess, sort <laughs> of. I don't know your opinions of Pink Floyd, but it's just the music guitars. Mm. They kind of have a very kind of cold rock style. I mean, just like bordering on it, but it's definitely better. Hmm. Um, yeah, it's it's a much better song, and it feels like it, it's one of those, what is this song doing on this album? Maybe it's like written earlier on the song, then it decided to change on the rest of it. Yeah. Possibly, I, I mean, it's one of those cases where we've been saying about how lyrics deserve a better song. This song deserves a better album. <laughs> you know, it deserve. it actually would be... It wouldn't be out of place on volume two. I can see it working. I mean, as well as I said earlier about you know, this being easily one of the best songs on the album. Yeah. But presumably because you know, it actually sounds like you know, some of the legends stuff from earlier on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the rest of the album actually this good. Hmm. If the rest of the album was this good, well, this would be quite a boring episode because it would just be us repeating ourselves of how good Hurt are. Now we have a chance to actually bitch about things again. What the fuck happened? Yeah. Next. Good bitch. Yeah. But next song. Now this is where we. Well, where I bitch. To fair, it won't just be you. Yeah. Pills. Fuck this song with a rusty meat cleaver wrapped in barbed wire! <laughs> it is. Ah! Oh. I mean, it sounds, it, it's not that it sounds like a generic rock song, it sounds like a generic pop song! I mean... It really, it's like, oh, it starts out with, oh, with like, an acoustic guitar, and now, a new single from Nickelback. I mean... It does fucking sound like Nickelback. Yeah. I mean, the opening, well, she takes these pills and she moves along, she takes these pills and it's better really doesn't matter to me you're living in your life in your own routine a product of pharmacology it seems she looks at him like he's a machine and lives with him because he's her bill machine that brings her the groceries she swears she needs so she takes the pills and she moves along she takes the pills and it's better she pays the bills and he mows the lawn she takes the pills and it's better it just, it repeats like that at nauseam. Mm, this, this is not a Hurt song. Yeah. It, I, 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 I don't normally, I mean, okay, I know I, I get passionate and angry about certain songs, but most of the time I just say, yeah, I, I'm not a fan of this song, or I really don't like it. Or, in some cases, I will say that I hate the song, but it won't be a vehement hate, it'll just be a, I really do not want to listen to this. Now, this song, I detest, I loathe entirely. <laughs> I, I absolutely, I wish it to burn in the fieriest pits of hell. I wish to see it cornholed by pineapple dick demons in the seventh circle. I specify the seventh circle because the eighth and ninth are cold. And now on the heat cast. <laughs> well, this song is bad. It is a generic pop rock that sounds stupid like Nickelback, and you know, just blend into an album 
is released in the charts for the sake of being in the charts. Yeah. Also, how how did a band that actually knew sounded interesting beforehand now it just sounds so incredibly dire? I don't know. Like, I mean, the chorus especially just makes me think of you know what happened with the Foo Fighters decided to you know lose any ability to think. <laughs> Teamed up with Nickelback and then just vomited something out onto a plate <laughs> and then it. That sounds about right. I actually quite like the Foo Fighters, so it just has that kind of sound to it, but done badly. I'm fairly mad with the Foo Fighters. They've got some songs that I do like. Most of it just doesn't really tickle me either way. Which is still more positive from your opinion on this. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's shit. It's cool. Yeah. Dreams away. Dreams. When did they become Blink 182? <laughs> yeah, I guess you can kind of say that. I mean, I suppose they've always had the kind of slightly punkish sound to it. Always quite good influence. But... Yeah, but there's. I mean, good. Uh, I'm trying to think of good examples of. You know, good sort of modern punk. That'd be sort of like Dead Kennedys, Black Flag, The Ramones. Yeah. That sort of thing. But this is pop punk, you know, the Green Days, 182. So, um, oh, what's that? There was one that was sort of contemporary with Blink 182 that began with an S. Some point one? That's the one. <laughs> you know, that really shitty, obnoxious, they have nothing to actually complain about in their lives. They're just whining emo punk tards. I never was a fan of. Playing white too, and I can't like Green Day. So. Hmm. I there were a couple of songs that I did listen to of Green Days, but as I say, it's it's like it's like when you find a good Oasis track, it's few and far between. I don't think I ever found anything of theirs I actually liked. So. Of whose? Um, Green Day. Yeah. Um, I think Monkey Wrench is the only one I actually liked, and. I think the reason that worked for me is because they're actually saying I'm a really whiny motherfucker and you should really not pay attention to me. It's sort of like, yes! Go fuck yourselves! Anyway, I can't be bothered to go through the lyrics because fuck this song. I mean, it opens with an ooh or an oh or what? Now, if you want a good song with O's, look no further than Jungle Love by The Time. Now, that's a good song that has O's in it. It's the one that goes, oh wee oh wee oh. oh Or even the Brune and G fight song. I mean, oh wee oh wee oh, not necessarily bad. Hmm. It's just it's really used properly. Yeah. Um, it's just a more common cause of... Look at us, we're stadium rock hipsters. Oh, there they are. Yeah, but yeah, fuck this song. I don't think they find anything particularly offensive about it myself, there's also nothing interesting. Yeah, that's what I mean, it's sort of like, I'm bored, give me something new. <laughs> the next song, Fighting Dow. It's a bit of a pick-up. Something beautiful. I mean, lyrically, eh. But musically, it's definitely a great improvement after the absolute shite that we had to listen through for four songs. Oh, four songs? Oh, well in there. I mean, okay, there's probably more than four songs in the album, which are absolutely shite, but I never wrote. Yeah. But it's basically, you take the songs that we can recommend, Pandora, Wars, Fighting Dow, and Well. And this song musically sounds like Hmm. Vocally, it reminds me of Shinedown. Yeah, I can hear that. Yeah, I know it's spelt T A O, but it's actually pronounced Dao. Because you know language. Yeah. Um. If I'd have known it is the only time I would see your face, then we'd celebrate when I'm alone. Living is only time till I see your face, though it's not today. When I'm alone, it is the only time. I would see your face when I'm desperate. Now I'm alone, building my holy shrine, where I'll see your face and then contemplate. A bit more interesting than usual, at You know what it makes me think of? Huh? 
And in my dreams, I see you. <laughs> Lyrically, it reminds me of one last goodbye. I guess I can see that. Mm. Right now, I, I've had a terrible night's sleep, so my actual singing voice is not up to par. Cello, or something, or whatever it is. Yeah. Cello, string in, well, specifically violin or cello solos tend to improve the quality of songs dramatically, it seems. There's something a bit different in amongst you know, a lot of basic structure. Mm. I just seem to have a solo in general because this album does not seem to have any of them. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the other albums haven't either, but this one, this I think it might actually be the first one on the album. The thing is, this album desperately needs it. It does. I think it's give us something interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Good song. Just wish the rest of the album was more like it. It might actually be a decent album, then. Yeah. Finally, we have that. Parentheses. No, such a not thing. That. Huh? Not that. Okay, there's only, there's only one thing we can do. We have to use that. Sooner or later, there was going to be a Monty Python reference, wasn't there? Also, what's with British? Anyway, um, this song is really meh. Mm, it's kind of an example of. I guess I can kind of see why they decided to go for this kind of song as a closing song. Hmm. But it doesn't quite work. Yeah. When you compare it to the previous albums, where the final songs really felt like, yeah, we're ending on a big note. House Carpenter, thank you for listening. Yes. Yeah. That'd be fantastic. And also, um, oh, the one that follows from Som- Somnambulist. Oh, more of a kind of pseudo label. Yeah. No, it's good right now. Um, oh, The Old Mission. Oh, that's right. But it's like, that's how you end it out. This thing, it kind of is trying to, just trying to lull you into a kind of sense of security. Uh, it kind of does that, but also at the same time, kind of just makes you want to fall asleep because it isn't very good. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, we can't really talk about this without also talking about the hidden track that's actually longer than this. <laughs> Um, ironically, it does actually do what we praised them for not doing on Volume 1. Um, silent... Yeah. Yeah. It's a huge gap, I guess, in a couple of minutes, but still, it's there. Yeah. Well, it's not for... No, because... Oh, God. See, this is how bored I was. I couldn't even remember... I, I can't remember how long the gap is between songs. It's in a couple of minutes. Yeah. But it's still just... Really not good. So why? <laughs> I, I never understood the point of having a random chunk of silence for the track. Yeah. I get, I can't explain why it's done it back in like the eighties or something. But yeah. Now, for what purpose? Yeah, I mean, in the eighties, they had an excuse of they couldn't really edit things together as well as they can now. Nowadays, you can just take. I mean, it's literally what I do when I'm editing together the blooper reels. You just take a section, and this was in 2009, so you knew they had the technology to be able to do this. You just highlight the bit of track and delete it, or move it. Done. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, this this song, uh, there's a place where people dance while holding hands to light of the moon. Sing to me tunes, and I'm not ugly, and loved ones that died still survive with no pain, and I'd lose it if it went away. Just how do I begin to explain, by the way your way or my way's okay? Because either way you... Either way you don't have a name, it's when she loved me, the taste of the dew and the music in you. All I can say is the ice cream truck music is actually more interesting than this fucking song. <laughs> I quite like the kind of use of layered vocals. Mm. But, but that's about the most interesting thing about it. Yeah. I, see, I guess it does kind of fit as a uh, closing song. Mm. It does a better job of ending the album than the actual last track technically does. Yeah. Well, 
Oh, that. Okay. I was just quickly looking up what the hidden track... Ugh. Shall we just discuss the hidden track? Because we're bored with the official one. Yeah. Right. Flowers. Emo bullshit fuckballs that needs to get off of my Her album. <laughs> Seriously, fuck this song in its mealy-mouthed, whiny, pathetic, thin-skinned ass. This thing reminds me a lot of something as well. But... I... A napalm enema? <laughs> well, these lyrics have weirded me out, but... So what do you want about it? Uh... Well, I okay, saw so the children will sing a song in the streets. Sounds like the twenty-third psalm. For those who don't know, the twenty-third psalm is the "The Lord is my shepherd." Yada yada yada. Um, to music of twenty-one notes. The flowers are dead in a vase by my bed on the place where the old woman died. Oh, vase by the bed. See, that, that's how boring this song is. It actually gives me dyslexia. My brain cannot process the words that I'm reading because they're so interminably dull that it's sort of like, nope, you're not going to read this properly. Fuck this song. Hey, if it was sung by the guy from Gazi's Wing, it would actually be more interesting. Now I want to hear that! <laughs> but yeah, it's like the re the chorus is Cause we're all gonna die Cause everyone dies And all that was ever And all that will be Single-celled creatures And anything green You will die it's funny as fuck. Uh, I mean, it's it's the one example of genuine, you can see, possible frustration with the record company. But it's whiny. It's not angry. It's not properly pissed. It's just, oh, they dropped me when my albums weren't a commercial success. It's sort of like, grow up, dude. Yeah, it's sort of like, because we're all got gonna die, kiss your ass goodbye, and sarcastic songwriters, guys with tattoos, drummers and bassists and engineers too, and every last person that sang in this room, they will die. Uh, and the morons at labels who think they know tunes, the army of lawyers that threaten to sue, the hookers that blow them when I just want food, and the asshats that download and never buy tunes. I mean, you know what my response to this is? Go fuck yourself with a garden rake! I <laughs> It's just... It, I mean, I know we're bitching and complaining about an album that is ostensibly bitching and complaining, but what else can we say? It's a shitty album! It really is. I mean, there's like four songs here that are actually good, as opposed to what? Like, ten or eleven or something on? Uh, let's see... Oh, it's not a good ratio. Uh, thirteen songs, we'll say. So, four good to nine bad. Not a good ratio at all. Ah, mm. uh, but yeah. This is what, it's because of how shitty this album is, which is why I'm worrying about how the crux will sound. We shall I see. Hmm? Probably just have a little bit of a dip in the career and then come back home. Some bands do that. So. Yeah. Um, some bands go, good album, bad album, good album, bad album. That's true. Metallica being a key example, because it's all... Yeah. Yeah. Because if you get two bad albums in a row, you kind of think... I don't ever really be bothered with this band anymore. Mm. I mean, I mean, if you do carry on, you'll be reluctantly thinking, mm, it could be good, but the last three albums sucked. Yeah. But anyway, we'll sign off here. The other thing might be worth noting is there was a bonus track on this album, which we'll talk to you later on, that you know, is not actually on the regular version. Mm. Which is actually not too shabby. Yeah? So, another time, but it's actually not bad. Fair dues. 
Anyway, that's us done with this album and signing off. It's goodbye from me. Uh, goodbye from me. Fuck this album! <laughs> <laughs>